Welcome to St Gabriel's Worship from Home. We are in another lockdown. I don't know what that feels like for you, whether much has changed or whether things are still going on like normal. Well, whatever it is, please feel free to know that we are praying for you wherever you are and whatever lockdown looks like. And also you can join us for a chat after this service goes out live on a Sunday morning at about 10.45. There is a coffee time where we come together just to chat and catch up with each other. The link is on the uh, below this video. So this is our moments to spend and dedicate our hearts and times to God this week. If you meet with God through our worship, like, share, comment, invite others to worship with us. But we're going to dedicate the next 30 or so minutes praying. We're going to dedicate our hearts, our minds and our, our bodies to God at this time. We're going to pray. We're going to read from the Bible. We're going to sing some songs. And we are going to give this moment and this time to God. So to recognise that these few moments are holy and special during this week, we're going to light a candle. We do it to mark out these 30 minutes as special, as moments that are holy to God. Especially during this lockdown, if you have been stuck inside or you haven't been out as much, you may be watching this and just, you know, Googling stuff as well, as opposed to entering into God's presence. So we light the candle as a recognition that these moments are to be dedicated to God. So we light the candle. So let us pray. Holy Father, loving Heavenly God, we give you our hearts, minds and souls. And we pray that as we come to enter into your presence now, you will send your spirit upon us. That you will open our hearts and minds to those things that you want us to hear. And that you will reveal to us new life. Amen. If you are new to worshipping with us, you can download our service sheet that we use uh, every week or follow along with the words that are on screen. So we pray this opening prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know if you are isolated or not, but we are a big family of God. When we say yes to Christ, we become part of his family. And we're going to sing our first song, Big Family of God. Some of you will know the actions. If you know the actions, join in. Dance, sing and worship Christ through song now. like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but God loves
curly hair Some of us have specs to wear All of us have different families Some of us are very loud Some of us don't make a sound That's because we're different, you and me But God loves We are part of a big family of God and also we are part of other networks and families and friendships and we recognise that sometimes we don't treat others as we should. We don't follow the commandments of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and body and loving your neighbour as yourself. When Jesus walked the earth, he called those things sins, those things that we do to separate us from the love of God and the love of others. And we take a moment every week to confess those things that we've done wrong, those things that have separated us from God's love and from the love of others. So we take a moment to pause, to reflect on the week gone past, and privately confess to God those things that you need to. And recognising we are part of a big family of God, we publicly confess by saying, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy upon us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you in the power of his Spirit now and always. Amen. We know that God's forgiveness, his grace and his love is there for those who truly confess and truly repent. So know that your sins are forgiven.
We are going to dive into the Bible now. We are in the Gospel of Matthew. We've got two weeks this week and next week uh, as we explore the Gospel of Matthew a little bit further. Next week is Christ the King Sunday, so we will have a focus on what it is and how Christ is King in our lives. So turn with me to Matthew 25, verse 14. And Isabella's going to read the Bible for us now. Your Bible reading today is from Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. Parable of the Talents. This is what it will be like, Jesus went on. It will be like a man who is going off on a journey. He summoned his slaves and handed over control of his property to them. He gave five talents to the first, two to the next, and one to the last, each according to his ability. Then he left. Straight away, the man who had been given the five talents went out and traded with them and made five more. Similarly, the one who had received two talents, went and made another two, but the one who received a single talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came back and settled accounts with them. The master who had received five talents came forward and gave the other five talents. Master, he said, you gave me five talents. Look, I've made another five. Well done indeed, said his master. You're an excellent slave and loyal too. You've been trustworthy with small things and now I'm going to put you in charge of bigger ones. Come and join your master's celebration. The man who had the two talents came forward. Master, he said, you've gave me two talents. Look, I've made another two. Well done indeed, said his master. You're or, all excellent slave and loyal to you've been trustworthy with small things and now i'm going to put you in charge of bigger ones come and join your master's celebration then the man who had one talent came forward master he said i knew that you were a hard man you reaped where you didn't sow and you'll profit from things you never invested in so i was scared i went and hid your talent in the ground here it is it's yours you can have it back you're a wicked and lazy slave, answered his master. So you knew that I reaped where I didn't sow a profit from investments I never made. Then you should have put my money in with the bangers then. And when I returned, I would have received back what I had in with interest. So take the talent from him, he went on, and give it to the man who had ten talents. Someone who already has, you see... I already have something, you see. They will be given more and they will have plenty. But if someone has nothing and they will be taken away from them. But as for this useless slave, throw him outside in the dark where all, where the people weep and grind their teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the summer, I was very proud to complete my first century bike ride. I was proud, but just a little bit embarrassed. Proud because I had achieved something that I had been aiming to do for many years. But embarrassed. Why would I be embarrassed about such an achievement? Well, as a cyclist, as a road cyclist, people do centuries all of the time. It's a big barrier to get past when you do your first one, but after that, well, people do them all the time. And, and so I was overjoyed to have done it. But as I say, just slightly embarrassed because I should have done it many years ago. And as a cyclist of many decades now, uh, it's something that really should have been done. But I didn't just ride the 100 miles. That, that wouldn't have worked. I couldn't just go out on my bike and, and then go off and ride because I wouldn't really get there. I'd probably have a puncture and not be prepared or uh, have a, a lot of pain and no real fitness. So it took quite a lot for me to do it. Through lockdown and, uh, before, and after lockdown, I was out cycling. I was cycling with the club. I was building up the miles that I was doing gradually, little bit by little bit. Uh, making sure that I could ride 60 or 70 miles in one go um, with the appropriate brakes, making sure I had my nutrition right and uh, having the right food and the right water and drinks and knowing how much I needed to be able to do that 100 miles. I had to put 
effort into it to be able to complete that ride. And then I have to continue to keep up that riding to be able to do it again and again or to continue riding at the same fitness. And it, if I don't, I know that my fitness uh, trails off. But what has me got me riding a century got to do with today's Bible reading? Well, we're coming towards the end of Matthew's Gospel. We're coming, at, well, not towards the end of Matthew's Gospel, but towards the end of our exploration of Matthew's Gospel. We've got this week and we've got next week. Well, we're focusing on Christ the King. But again, this um, parable, the parable of the talents that we've just had uh, read to us, explores what it means to be part of the kingdom of God again. It's a theme that we've been exploring week in, week out, and each week I've say, been saying things like you've got to be transformed by being part of the kingdom. If you're transformed by your faith, then you have to work at it and you have to do things. And this is no different. We read of the, the three servants and two of them who were... Um, very good, they've been given the talents, and a, a talent was a, a, a piece of money, and it was about equivalent to 15 years worth of work, and so that was quite a large amount of money, and the first two servants had been given five talents, and they added five more, and they were blessed, and then the third servant uh, took the talent and buried it, and uh, and just gave that one talent back, and the 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 keeper was a little bit shocked and um, the master was a bit shocked and upset with that person and what we read really is that the two first two servants actually spent time and used their gifts and talents to increase that wealth and increase that money the talents whereas the last person didn't and then we hear, and we hear Jesus saying that, um, you know, the, the final servant would be um, stripped and beaten and sent out into a place where there was the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And if we go back to a couple of weeks ago and to the wedding banquet, and uh, the we read of the person who couldn't be bothered to dress up and honour the wedding banquet and the person and the host, we read again the same language that the person should bite, be bound and hand and foot and thrown into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And there's a parallel between the stories Jesus was talking and a uh, consecutive words and that was to remind the reader and bring the reader back and the first hearer back to those words of Jesus. But also in this passage we're getting towards the plot and the death and resurrection of Jesus and Jesus is also saying to his disciples when he is speaking here that he is going to that place. And then we read and we hear a few chapters later of Jesus being being killed and going to that place and then ultimately beating that and coming out and being resurrected and beating death again. But what are we to read into this uh, parable that we've heard? Well, if we dig into the context again. The first hearer or the first reader would have known certain things. They would have known that the uh, landlord or the uh, the master in this person would have been God. And he would have known and they would have known that the slaves that were working in it would have been Israel. Again, it's like the vineyard and the vineyard keeper. There's the parallels knowing that they, Jesus was speaking in a language that they understood to be Israel and to God. And we hear of this, um, the master going away and then coming back. And again, Jesus is highlighting the relationship with God and Israel and of the Messiah coming back. And when the, the master goes off 
to help uh, to work and leaves the the servants in place to grow those talents it's the story of Israel being left and what we read here is really interesting because that final servant Jesus is likening to Israel because what had God done well God had given the people of Israel a message he'd given them hope he told them about the life that they were to live. He'd given them a temple and he'd given them good news. And what we read and what we read in the Bible is what they did with that. What did they do? Well, they kept it to themselves. They made sure that the temple was for specific people. They made sure there was rules and regulations of things that had to do. And so that final servant was likened to Israel. They took the message of God, this wonderful message that they had been given, and hid it away and restricted it down and down again to certain people. And this is a story, again, of who the kingdom of God is for. And we'd heard through again as stories that the kingdom of God was for people like the tax collectors and those who repented and who came to the kingdom of God but not only came to the kingdom of God but acted upon it. Those who once uh, renounced their old ways made things right. Zacchaeus the tax collector when he responded to Jesus not only paid back all that he'd stolen but he paid it back in a lot more as well. And so we're reading again this story of what the kingdom is God is like, what it means to be part of it and what happens to Israel because they didn't treat the kingdom of God in the right way. And so the first two servants are like those people who followed Jesus, who did more and flourished because of it. Not just finances, but understood that what they were given wasn't theirs and that they were to grow it. So they understood that the kingdom of heaven wasn't just for them, but was for everyone and that they should go out and talk about it and have their lives transformed and changed by it. And they were to train themselves in the way of the kingdom of God so that they could grow and grow the kingdom for others. Just like if you want to ride a century bike ride, you can't just go out and do it. You have to train and you have to work with others to build that physique and that ability to do it. And we read again and again through these Gospels stories in Matthew of these parables of Jesus saying, if you want to be part of the kingdom of heaven, you can't just say yes and do nothing. You have to work at it. You have to grow the kingdom. And we are called to grow that kingdom through us. We know that what we are given is not just ours, it is God's as well. And we are gifted our place in the kingdom of God. And we are to invite others into that kingdom. But invite others not just through words, but through actions and deeds. And so this parable of the talents however difficult it is to read, is about understanding that we, what we are given is God's as much as ours, and that we are you to use what we are given wisely, but we are to invest it and grow it. Just like we read about a mustard seed being planted, a tiny little seed that grows into something big. Again, the kingdom of heaven, a small little idea in our lives that grows as we learn to live in that kingdom and change ourselves and change others because of it. So we come to this place of understanding that the kingdom of God is for everyone.
But the kingdom of God starts with us through our words and our actions and through using what God has given us to the glory of him but to the good of others as well. So I pray that as we are continued to be challenged by Jesus' words and what the kingdom of God is, that you will be challenged. You will be challenged to be part of that kingdom, that you will be challenged to grow that kingdom through your words and actions and that you are called to repentance if you are like the third servant who goes right well I've done church this week I've turned up I've watched online tick that's my faith done no that's not it done you have to activate actively do things day in day out and sometimes we need help with that that's why we have the Bible study group on a Wednesday to help us understand and learn from the Bible and the kingdom of God and what it's like and how our actions change and how we're challenged by others people act- others people's actions to what we need to do to live our life in the kingdom of God. And that's why we come into fellowship and worship and repent each week and, and change ourselves each week and change our hearts because we know that we don't always live up to the same ways that we should. So be challenged by these words again, that we have to work to be part of the kingdom and know that you are invited into that kingdom and show others what being part of that kingdom is like. Don't be like the final servant who takes what is given and buries it away to one day a week and is just slightly embarrassed like I was on that century to talk about it slightly embarrassed to talk about the faith because hey I don't want to offend anyone well actually we have the good news of Jesus to tell we have the kingdom of God to talk about and we have our faith to talk what it's like to be transformed by that kingdom and by that yes to Jesus So go and tell, go and be transformed and go and transform others. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your revelations through scriptures once again. And we pray that you will use us in your kingdom to bring kingdom here on earth. We pray And we ask for forgiveness for those times where we haven't used what you have given us for the benefit of others and for your kingdom. And for those times where we haven't quite lived up to what you have called us to do. And we pray this morning and this day that as we go forward in your kingdom, that you will use us, that you will change us and that we will hear your call. We ask this through your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So having heard and reflected on the Bible, we're going to proclaim the faith that we have, that faith that we believe, that we read about in the Bible every week and every day. And that is the words that will come alongside me now. So we affirm our faith through saying, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We know that this second lockdown is being quite hard on people and we know we have a God that is in that pain and that suffering. And we're going to sing a song called Raise a Hallelujah, a song that was written in a moment of pain and suffering that calls 
to raise our faith, to praise God through our circumstances and ask God to be with us in that time. So let us sing, raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I raise a hallelujah With everything inside of me I raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah that song that we have just sung, Raise a Hallelujah, to our our prayers today. We're going to use that song to help us to pray.
So let us pray. We do raise a hallelujah in times of hardness and difficulty and we raise a hallelujah for all of those who are in pain and suffering at this time. We raise a hallelujah for those who are working in the NHS. We raise a hallelujah for those who are serving communities and making sure everyone is looked after. We raise a hallelujah for those people who are worried about their jobs. We raise a hallelujah for all those who are after a need of operations. We raise a hallelujah for all of those who are grieving. We raise a hallelujah for ourselves in our own needs. And we raise a hallelujah for all those who are voiceless. And we raise a hallelujah for all those parts of the world that are suffering due to war or conflict. We raise a hallelujah for all those parts of the world that are suffering because of drought and famine. And we raise a hallelujah for those people who need to know God's presence this day. And we raise hallelujahs, not just this Sunday, but every day. And as we come to the end of this time of prayer, I ask you to pray and raise a hallelujah every day for those who are in need, for those who are suffering, and for yourself if you need to. And if you don't need that hallelujah, dance and sing and tell of what God has done for your life. So Lord, we ask that our prayers, that our hallelujahs are heard by you and by the people that we raise them for. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we finish by saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. In a moment we're going to sing our final hymn of praise. To God be the glory. But remember, wherever you are, we are praying for you. Remember that God is with you through this difficult time. And remember to walk with Christ. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Walk through this week in the peace of Christ. Amen. So to God be the glory.
Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender. Through 